Alright, good afternoon, everyone. It's 3.30. This is our last function of the day for the press. I want to remind everyone that when you go to the after party tonight, be sure to bring your badge. And if you want a drink, bring your government ID. Bring the badge that you've got. Alright, so our next talk is designed uh, designing with the API with Mark Urain. Is that right, Urain? Uh, Mark is an interdisciplinary designer dedicated to making the web more accessible and human friendly by facilitating the transfer of information to design. Mark works in automatic, contributing to the open source project WordPress. The WordPress REST API is often perceived by designers as something developers talk about and check or spill with lines of code. This talk aims to help designers familiarize themselves with the API and grow our computational design skills with its help. We'll cover what an API is, or what it's used for, and how we can integrate with it. Please help me welcome Mark Green presenting Designing with the API. Thank you. All right, so just to be clear, this is designing with the API, not designing the API. I am a designer, not a API. Um, so, as mentioned, I do work at Automatic as a product designer, and um, I do enjoy giving back to the community and um, having fun with WordPress. In fact, I'd like to, my goal with this talk is hopefully to encourage you to think of WordPress differently than maybe you normally do, and uh, be more innovative with it to help the future progress with WordPress. So on my off hours, I do enjoy history. So I'm going to talk a little bit about history before we get into things. Um, this particular uh, suggestion is on wordpress.org forward slash ideas, where people can uh, offer up ideas that they'd like to see done with WordPress. Um, this member, Motik, says, uh, you know what, let's make WordPress a CMS. And uh, right below it, Andy K here says, you know what, it's blogging. Let's find something for CMSs if you want that. Now, this conversation happened 11 years ago. This is back in 2007. This is not new. This is history. But we might all be familiar with that debate that went back and forth with, is WordPress a CMS? Is it not a CMS? And um, it's interesting because a CMS, a content management system, is help software that helps you perform CRUD operations. Uh, create, read, update, delete content, right? And and if we understand that there is content on your website, then where does that content live? It lives in the database. So essentially, the content on your website is data. And this is a neat way to look at it. You know, we're familiar with content is king, but if we look at your content as data, then it's neat to think that there could be ways that we can access that data and do some interesting th things with it. And that's hopefully what I'm going to get to today. But again with history, WordPress was forked uh, from the 2 Evolution Cafe Block back in 2003. We're familiar with this. Um, it catered primarily to bloggers. All right? It was a blogging software. In um, 2005, we introduced something called pages into core. You couldn't create a page before this easily. So pages was introduced into core, and now you can have an about me page. So WordPress gained in popularity, started taking more market share, it became a CMS. People were using it to create more than just blogs, they were creating websites. Then in 2016, the API was merged into core. And this allowed people to create more than just websites. Native apps were being created, built on top of WordPress, which is a really cool future, right? These are things that people can create and build on top of WordPress. So if we look at this progression, and we think of Moore's Law, I mean, what's the logical conclusion to this, right? World domination. <laughs> By, by 2019, you know, like, like um, maybe that's not quite the case, but WordPress as we know, who, who, what percentage of all websites right now are built on WordPress? Anybody? 30.2. 30% I believe is the number right now. 
30% of all websites are on WordPress right now. That is crazy. That's crazy. What can we do with that? So, technolo technological singularity occurs in WordPress and AI, and, and we're like excited, right? Like, like, I've never had to like held up my hands quite like this in response to something on my screen, but evidently people do. And if, when WordPress becomes an AI, I will surely do this. I will, I will respond accordingly. So, so it's WordPress Skynet is that what you're saying? Yes, Skynet. So WordPress, what are you building? With WordPress, and in fact, what are you building on WordPress? Is kind of the point I want to question. I want to ask you is um, think about what you're doing with it. What other ways can you innovate with it? What are some interests that you have that maybe WordPress can help support those ideas? Oftentimes, when we think of WordPress, this is what we think. Of. Um, you get an install of WordPress, you have a theme, some plugins, and you're going to create something like this. This is the common paradigm, right? Um, I'm going to end up, in fact, at Automatic, on our sign-up steps, these were the four buckets that we kind of put you in. What, what were you creating? What sort of site did you want to create? Um, we know of WordPress under the hood, right? It looks something like this. I see cool PHP, HTML, CSS. Uh, as of late, we're getting a lot more JavaScript involved in there. And um, this produces a lot of what we see out there. But we know that WordPress can now look like this. And with this is great possibilities. So ultimately, WordPress becomes anything we want it to become. I can now use whatever front-end software I want to use to create whatever product I want to create. And that's all thanks to the REST API. Right? A lot of this work that's been done has allowed WordPress to become something greater than what it was initially planned to be. And so an API, application programming interface, really enables software systems to communicate with this defined set of rules. Um, this is important for us as designers, as developers, as people who use WordPress and bloggers, anybody who wants to communicate or facilitate that transfer of information, this is another way we can really do it. This is how we can facilitate this transfer of information between software systems. So, because I'm a designer, when I think of WordPress, the API, I didn't know anything about it. And, and it looked a lot like this to me when I looked at it. So, for, mo for those of you who don't know, this is a grammatically correct sentence. <laughs> buffalo, 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 and that's really what I saw, right, when I looked at the API. But if we swap out the verb with its synonym, we add a few commas, things start looking a little easier to read. Maybe we stack it differently, add in some words, and then we can understand what's being said here in this grammatically correct sentence. Buffalo bison, that other buffalo bison bully, also bully buffalo bison. And this just resonated with me when I looked at the WordPress API. Um, basically, this is what we were reading. But it was a way for us to understand what we were reading, which I hope to help us get there a little bit. And you kind of get the picture. Right? That's what the sentence is about. <coughs> So, <laughs> I mean, it's really buffalo, 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 <laughs> buffalo, bu I, like, I couldn't read this. I didn't, this is a JSON file. Can you leave that up long enough so we copy it down? I see the word poster. Yeah, so let's take a look at this. Um, with the simple zoom, I highlight a few things. We can kind of see that, you know, this is, there's an ID, 
There's a type post, okay, so we get an idea that we're looking at a post. Uh, there's an author ID. There's all sorts of nuggets of like interesting things in this when we start investigating for real. That's what I had to do. I kind of had to come and understand this a little better. Luckily, browsers have plugins that help format JSON files even more so. And you can get something like this. So it's really easy to read. And if you saw um, Chris's talk earlier, you saw some of this in this talk as well. It's helpful to get an idea. This is content. This is the content on your website. Right here, it looks a lot like data. And this is the kind of stuff that we now have, are capable of grabbing and doing some stuff with. So, just to clarify on a little, go on to the technical side of it, if you'll bear with me. Uh, the API consists of two main things, really. Two huge things, right? Endpoints and routes. Uh, we could see the great documentation on .org, but essentially an endpoint is a function available through that API. So it's whatever you want to happen when that route is called, right? A route kind of gives the, you have to register route, and it gives you the URI where to go to get that function, return that the result. So here you can kind of see an example. It's uh, like, it's just returning a string here, and then the route. When you go to this route here, it'll pull that, perform that function, and return it right here. So fairly simple. This is all it's really doing. And this is what it looks like on .org. .org is a multi-site, but on the high level, this is the API there. And so, so world domination, right? Like, this is cool stuff. I want to be a part of this. Like, how am I going to help the software and do really cool things throughout this whole thing? Um, count me in with this. So different ways to design with the API. I want to talk about like some things that I've done, give examples, some things that I've, other people have done, some of which might have, you might have seen in the talk previous. But I find this fascinating because just because I can do some fun things that I like, like data visual or or something, some sort of app that I can create that really pulls content from these sites and. One such example was at um, the AIG, AIGA Design Week. Um, I talked about computational design, and I did an example. I went to their website, which happened to be a WordPress website, really cool. It was the latest update, so they had the API already merged in. And I was able to grab their API, and just on code pen here, I was able to create a HTML5 local storage search, and what I did is I went to their mission statement. And I read their mission statement, and they talked about design, diversity, and community. And so I, live on stage, I said, okay, let's test your mission statement against your posts. Are you writing about the things that you say you care about? And so I typed in the word design, I'm looping through their posts here, and basically each circle here is one of their posts. And the number and size of the circle is how many times that word was used within that post. So when I typed in design, they were writing a lot about design. And it kind of confirmed to them, they were sweating it at the time, but it confirmed to them that they are doing their writing about what they say they care about. It was kind of a neat thing, like you could go to this code pen and fork it, throw in someone else's website, and investigate what other people are writing about compared to their like mission statements or their desires. And to do that, I was using P5.js, which is a JavaScript library for visual data. And, and this is pretty much how sim simple like it was, right? right? Like I, I'm creating a variable, and I'm really just going to their uh, API, to the post section of it, pulling out 10 posts. And then I'm looping through that, essentially, which the other code is but I'm looking through that and pulling out that content. Another example here I gave at um, 
at WordCamp Europe. I asked the question to the audience, I said, what is the most important part of the website? I posted some, this question on a website, and I opened up comments uh, so that anybody can leave a comment without any approval, and everything would just show up, right? So I, the audience went to this post, they all entered in their, in the comments section what their one word answer would be, and I refreshed the page, and lo and behold, this was kind of what showed up, some visual data, some visual data about if the word was used, was commented more than once, it was a bigger circle, it changes colors as the circles got larger. And I, I mean, this, this was fantastic. That someone said she thought beard, like someone that thought beard was. Um, obviously, like to that person, I'm just up here saying beard, beard, beard. <laughs> And again, I'm, I'm looping through, and you can see, rather than going to the posts, I'm going to the comments of a specific post. So I'm able to pull just those comments. If any of you are familiar with theming, Foxhound is a theme uh, developed by Kelly Duan, designed by Mel Choice. It's a React single page theme that is built on the API. It was a really cool experiment that they were doing. This is a um, React Native app that I built. It took me about a day to do this. To figure out kind of React Native, I wanted to explore that more, and I wanted to do something with the REST API. What I had to do here was a little more technical, though. I wanted to loop through media. All these photos with these quotes are just images in the media library. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to return uh, a random media based on every click of the button there. And so there was a lot more involved. I had to uh, create an endpoint, actually. I had to write a function because to grab just the ID of the media library. But it was a fun project because rather than looping through posts or looping through comments, I thought, let's do the media library. And it basically looks something like this. You know, I'm grabbing the API here with the URL path to the media, and then I wrote a plugin that allowed me grab that extended the API and allowed me to get these. And that kind of looks something like this. So the plugin is right here. And just getting ultimately getting these IDs and then returning them with this route. Registering. Yeah. Are you not having to use that or like XML?